Okay, g'day folks and welcome back. So, what I want to do this afternoon, or well tonight I should say, um, we're going to have a bit of a chat about uh, synthetic slings. There's been a bit of conjecture over a couple of posts I put up lately and a bit of an argument and look, I'm not a big fan of typing, so rather than get into it too much with the responses, the big problem is a lot of people are saying there's there has to be three ways to identify a synthetic sling. Now, in the real world, yes, there are typically three ways. You can look at the tag, you can look at the color coding, or you can look at the stripes on it. But only one of them is mandatory, and that is having the working load limit on the tag. Now, if something doesn't have a tag on it, you're going to tag it out and remove it from service. Now, in the majority of the world, in well, the majority of Australia, I shouldn't say the world because I do know I do have a lot of people overseas watching as well. But in Australia, we do have color coding for our slings, but it's not a mandatory color coding. Now, when you go through your dogging license, your RTO may talk to you about different color coding, and good on them if they do, they probably should because it's the most common ones you're going to get out there. So for example, if you're working in construction, you're going to if you come across a violet sling, it's going to be one ton, green sling's going to be two ton, yellow sling's three ton, grey's four, red's five, etc, etc, etc. Alright, now if the sling has a colour, alright, um, you can look at the colour and tell what it's good for. But it doesn't have to be one of those colours. Alright, so... What I'll do is I'll bring up the Australian standards and we'll have a look at what it actually says. All right, so with the Australian standards, it states that where the color of the sling is used to identify its working load limit, the color code in the table uh, shall be used. All right, so if the color, if they're gonna rely on the color, it must meet the colors in this table here. All right, so as I said, one tons of violet, two tons green, three tons yellow, uh, grey's four, red's five, brown six, blue eight, orange is 10 or above. So anything above 10 ton, 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 ton slings, they're all gonna be orange. Okay, now, but it go, and then it goes on where stripes are used um, to identify the working load limit of the sling, the stripe code in table two shall be used and the stripe shall be black. So if it's got black stripes on it, then they will be equate to the working load limit. So once again, one ton sling, one stripe, two ton sling, three stripes, and it goes down to 10. 10 ton sling is gonna have 10 stripes. After that, well, you're not gonna spend your time there counting the stripes anyway. A lot easier just to look at the tag, all right? It's the quickest and easiest and most reliable way. All right, now, that is common on slings, but it's not always the case. So, it goes on to say, where the color of the sling is not used to identify the working load limit, the color shall not be any of the colors listed in table two. So, that says that if you are working on stage, you can use black slings so they can't be seen. Okay, so I hope that clears it up a little bit for you. There's only one way to guarantee to know the working load limit of the sling, and that is by looking at the actual tag, all right? Most of them will be color coded, most of them will have stripes, but it is not a mandatory thing, okay? Now, while you're looking at the tag, there's a couple of other things on the tag that you might want to take note of, and whenever you're slinging loads, you've got to look at how you're going to sling it, what angle your sling is going to be at, and whether or not they're reeved. So, how you sling the load is going to affect the capacity of the sling. So, the other information on the sling tag that you really need to take note of is the angle factors and the reeving factors. All right, so keep that in mind. The colors are mandatory, the stripes are mandatory, the working load limit tag is. All right, now with the tag, make sure you've got that other information on there as well. The angle factors, the reeving factors, the working load limit, etc., etc. All right, now another issue that, well, it's not so much an issue, I've got a couple of um, people from overseas chatting as well, and what happens, people have different terminology for different things. So over here, a lot of people call them um, nylon slings, 
And whereas over in Europe, from what I've been told, they call them polyester. Now, keep in mind, you can get both types. You can get nylon slings and you can get polyester slings. So I'll just bring up the standards again. I'll just have, we'll have a quick look at that. All right, so, okay. So, look, as you can see here, you can have the different types of slings. And how do you tell which way, which one you've got is by looking at the color of the actual tag itself. All right, so if you do have nylon slings, it's gonna have a green tag on it. All right, if you've got polyester slings, which, Look, realistically, most of the things we use are polyester slings. And if you're not actually sure, because most Aussies are going to say you use nylons, and it's just terminology, right? But in reality, if you look at the colour of the tag on the sling, it's going to tell you what it's made out of. So if it is polyester, it's going to be a blue tag. Now, if next time you go to work, look at your sling tag, and you will find that most of them are actually blue. You don't actually see a lot of nylons, but they are out there. Okay, now you can also get polypropylene, which is a brown, and how do you pronounce that? Aramid polyamide. I'm no scientist. All right, and if you do see yellow tag, that's what they're made out of. All right, now realistically, at the end of the day, um, the workload limit is what you need to be aware of. So, because it says here, the color of the sling label shall be used to identify the fiber material. All right. The color label on the slings manufactured from new or high performance synthetic fibers not listed above shall not be a color from table one. So if you do come across a sling that's made from something completely different, the tag won't be one of those colors, all right? So I assume you might get a white tag with something made something completely different or something along those lines, all right? So the tag color will define what it's actually made out of as well. All right, now, speaking of colors, um, now this may not be on everywhere, but in my experience on most sites I've been to, and I kind of show me it's on a lot of other sites as well. Now a lot of sites I've been on are mine sites, and on most of mine sites, if something is pink in colour, it's generally used for towing. Now if you're not aware, if you ever use any lifting equipment for towing, you can't use it for lifting again. So if you have to borrow a set of chains out of a crane to tow something, once they're towed, you've got to tag them out and they need to be sent off for inspection. Now the reason for that is, if you're using a 10 mil chain, a single leg of 10 mils, good for 3.2. If you use that to um, tow out a two ton car or little ute or whatever, you don't know how much weight's actually being pulled on that with the dynamic loads and cores on it. So you don't know what's happened to that chain. All right, so if you come across a chain that's pink, a softy that's pink, all right, make sure you ask a question because it could be a site where pink is designated as towing equipment. All right, so that was just a quick uh, chat about softies. Um, the other thing I will mention about softies too is make sure you do protect them, all right? They are a lot more um, prone to damage than chains or flexible steel wire rope. So if you are going to be using one on any sharp edges, make sure you pack those edges as well, just to try and protect your slings. If you don't go using them on things like Rio Bar, because I have seen and know of a couple of incidents where they've used Rio Bar that's cut into them and they've actually dropped the load. So I have, do know of that happening. All right, so make sure you do look after your softies they're a great bit of gear unfortunately there's been too many sites that have banned them rather than training their people to use them properly all right so the problem is by banning them um, you're losing a great tool so look after your slings all right and they'll look after you as well if you are having a few issues on site maybe get a someone out there to train you on the safe use of the slings as well all right so Thanks for your time. I hope that sort of helps you a bit and saves me typing a lot of answers in all the time. All right, and hope to talk to you soon in the next video. Thanks for your time. Bye.